if you can hear this, but the wind outside is howling and screaming and the rain is falling and the wind is, it's like the uh, background noise of a hammer production film of the daughter of Dracula or some equally pathetic remake of a universal movie. I watched one yesterday that was fun to watch. You know, and the mon our monsters, you could see the strings in the spaceship movies. You know, I like that. Uh, CGI, to me, CGI looks even less realistic than strings because the strings were real. And I could understand it when I look at a CGI movie. Yes, I'm amazed and bewondered by the cleverness of people in the machine to make things look the way they do, but they also don't work like the way they do. The, the movie of the some end of the world thing where it showed the dome of St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome falling over, completely intact, and then rolling down the hill, or whatever it was doing, before it finally turned to dust. You know, we know what happens when buildings collapse. Dust happens. Very easy. Dust. Anyway, enough of that. Recently, uh, this is an apology. I apologize my reaction to uh, a recent uh, fracas that continued. I mean, this is the umpteenth time that this argument has happened on a Facebook page uh, about fountain pens where um, occasionally you'll see people talking about pens and pens and pens and pens and occasionally you'll see someone have a picture of a pen and next to it is a picture of a gun and you know some people are gun collectors as well as pen collectors that didn't bother me and sometimes you'd see a jackknife or some other kind of a knife that not a butter knife but usually a pocket knife of some sort and that didn't bother me but recently, someone had a picture of a gun, and then the next day there were other, I mean, pictures of a pen. Here's a pen, and here's a big honking gun. And it seemed more about the gun than about the pen. And I didn't, I, so I typed in, WTF is it with all these pictures of all these guns? And it was explained to me by the narrator, the moderator of the group, that uh, guns were allowed because it's an EDC. Well, I didn't know what an EDC was, so I had to look it up. And it meant everyday carry. And I, then I got petrified with fear, or, or not, I wasn't petrified, I didn't turn to stone. I didn't hide under the bed, but I just thought, okay, these people carry these pens, these guns every day. And the, it wasn't so much that some people carry guns or that some people carry guns every day. That didn't bother me. It was that guns were among the things that was were considered in the examples given of things that seemed almost natural to carry every day. Like, um, you know, what, what do you carry every day? What do people carry every day in their pocket? They carry a wallet or purse. They, you know, if it's a wallet, it might have your driver's license and money in it. If it's a purse, it can contain lipstick. Here I'm being sexist. You know, it can contain makeup, it can, you know, if it was my grandmother's purse, there was always a half a stick of Wrigley's gum in it. 
why a half? Well, she was a, she went through the depression and a half a stick of Wrigley's gum was all you needed. You didn't need to have the entire thing. And there was a peppermint, maybe, maybe inside of its little plastic container or maybe not. Um, so, yes, there's things you carry every day. Cigarette cases, if you are a cigarette case person. Pez dispenser. Um, um, rosary. Worry beads. Um, the condom. You know, there are many things that you... Keys. You know, those are things that one might carry. And rabbit's foot on the end of your keys might be there. These are things that I think, when I think of carrying, everyday carrying, this is what I have. Reading glasses, blah, blah, blah. But the idea that a gun is in that group. Yes, a, yes on a pocket knife. That could go in a, in a thing. You know, they're just... There, was, there, there seemed to be a quantum leap from these sorts of objects to a gun. We're, we don't live in the Wild West when everyone had a gun. You know, we live in an age where we don't need them. But then, of course, other people disagreed with me and we had a little big, big old goddamn argument about this. And my my response to this was, okay, what can I take a picture of a pen with? What can I include in that picture that could be as... I, I went out of my way to think about this that could be as antithetical to a pen and maybe as offensive to some as guns were to me or to others in the group. I don't hate guns. Yes, I do. I hate guns. Okay. I hate them. So anyway, I included, let's just call it a marital aid. You can do the math. <laughs> I included a marital aid next to it. And it was an unused marital aid, by the way, but it was, it was, we'll just call it by its name. It was a, a sex toy of some sort. I don't need to do the, and that was next to it. And many people got the joke, which, and it, cause it was meant, you know, this, the joke, you know, was meant, here's a pie chart of a joke. And what makes a joke funny is there's an element of truth to it, and the truth might not be factual truth, but a believed truth. You know, any sort of joke about the, a rabbi, an Irishman, a, a rabbi, a priest, and a plumber go into a bar. You know, you 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 have your your stereotypical beliefs about each of those people. And, or they might not be beliefs, but you have this common idea of what each of these, you, you understand that the, you, the, you, underst you, you, you get all of the facts that you need to about these people to continue with the joke. To understand, you know, that happens in a millisecond. And the joke continues, and it's funny because of these factoids that we have. And they're not real facts, they're just factoids. Beliefs that are stereotypical, uh, whatever. So every joke has some degree of truthiness to it. And whatever percentage of the joke's pie chart that that requires this shared understanding of these groups of people or this individual 
is needed to understand the joke. Now on a side note here, I often don't understand stand-up comics because they talk about people that are in popular culture. You know, if they said a really funny joke about Leonardo DiCaprio and Madonna, I will not get it because I don't follow the tabloids and I don't know any of them personally or, or anything, so I won't get the joke. And sometimes I don't even know who they're talking about. And everyone else in the audience is laughing and having a good time and it's the funniest thing they ever heard and I don't even know what they're talking about. So I'm very bad at that. But um, so most jokes anyway have shared knowledge that's shared by the listener presumably. Um, so why am I telling you this now? Uh, so this joke that I, this sexual device that I included in my photograph of a pen, it only made sense and it only was funny because that I was telling it. People that didn't know me thought it was just offensive. People that knew me thought it was funny because they understand my sense of humor. And uh, even people that don't know me thought it was funny because it was funny. Okay, it was disgusting and gross as well. Not nearly as disgusting as a gun is to me. And there were people that responded about how I should be, well, one person said I should be banned from the group because moderator, Mr. Moderator, you know, banned peer. Well, that didn't happen. I've known the moderator for a decade or longer, and he knows my sense of humor, and I wasn't causing trouble, really. He did eventually remove my posting, and I asked him if he was going to take down the pictures of all the guns, too, and he said no. So he and I can have that argument later, and I know I'll lose because the moderator is very smart, and he'll come up with all sorts of logical reasons why he has to keep it there. But my, my main fear or reaction to the, the idea of, of guns being able to be included because in, the, in this group was because they are considered an everyday carry. That again was the thing that really frightened me. So, but I started to think, as you know, I've been thinking about this for 12 minutes and 59 seconds, but also I've been thinking about it for many days and I should be doing other things. But I, I got to think about everyday carry. Now, many of you know my opinion about stuff. Well, let me tell you one other story. There was one respondent to the picture that I posted that had the sexual device, the toy, in it. And she was saying that, you know, I occasionally look through Facebook with my daughter and seeing this was just horrible. What would I, what would I tell my daughter? Well, if you're able to tell your daughter what a gun is and what a gun is for and what, uh, why people use them and who they want to kill or what they're trying to defend or whatever. If you can tell your nine-year-old about that, why don't you tell me? Because I don't understand it. But anyway, if you can tell your nine-year-old about that, you can certainly explain this. Well done. Well, dear, some people, when they are together and they're intimate with each other, nine months later, something happens and someone's born and we're stuck with that. Or someone can just do that and have just as much fun. Understand? That was very rude of me. I'm sorry. I apologize yet again. But, again, to explain the use of that, it's fun. This 
It's not fun. Easy. Simple. Okay, every, let's just turn the page over. Now we're going to talk about something like everyday carry. Those of you that know me understand that I like to use the pens that I carry or collect. And I have some pens that I use a lot, and there's some pens that I use very little. And the ones that I use very little are the ones that probably are the most valuable, and I'm afraid of screwing them up. And they are the ones that I will start selling. So I'm just going to show you, though, uh, the difference between what I what I see in this. This is a more safety pen. This is not a sexual toy, though it sure looks like one. This is a more safety pen. This is a more safety pen that is an everyday carry. You can see that the person that owned this pen carried it every day, or nearly every day. This person never left home, or maybe never even used it. And it sat in the desk or in the box, the gift from the wife or the husband or the son or the whatever. And it never wrote a word, it never drew a picture, it never did a damn thing. And this is the one that collectors want because it's in perfect shape. This one my God, think of all of the stuff that this one did or wrote. This is so much more interesting to me than this one. Here's another example. Here's a Waterman safety pen. This was an everyday carry. And it looks like it was carried in the pocket. Why is this not... I need to be Sherlock Holmes here. The two ends are not worn, but the wear is here and here. So why would that be? I guess it was held in the hand a lot because it's, you know, this part, oops, this part is very worn, so the fingers would go there. This part is very worn because it's up there next to where it makes contact. But this person wrote a heck of a lot to get this much, quote, damage done in the years that they used it. So, yay. This, this is an example of an everyday carry. Here's another example. Here's one where the owner of this pen never used it or never was maybe just very careful. They used it at home on the desk very carefully, putting it there, writing the thank you note for the lovely uh, donation to the stained glass church window fund or whatever, and then carefully screwed back on and, the, and then placed back in the, on the little velvet pad. This one, the same exact pen, well, same, uh, almost the same, it's a, the same pattern, but a the long extended cover. So this was a, a pen that was all silver rather than the hard rubber showing through. And this is almost completely, well, it's not completely worn away, but it's very, very well worn. And I love seeing and owning things in my collection that showed wear. Among the things that I also have are these. Yes, no, no animals were harmed during the making of this video, but they were harmed in the making of this <laughs> product. You know, this is an ivory and silver uh, carpenter's rule, machinist rule, and you know the 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 things that this carpenter made late in its, in his life, his or her life, must have been slightly not, you know, the door jam 
you know, would, the door would creak, the windows wouldn't quite open all the way, or the entire building fell down uh, because there's no measures measurements on it. It's supposed to look like this, but it looks like that. So this ruler can't do much. It can measure something that's maybe an inch long, no, two inches. It can make measure things that are two inches long, and that's it. Three. No, where's the third inch? Doesn't. So, so much for that. But, this person made things. This person was run over by a, the trolley car on the way to work one day. Now, actually, this one is equally worn on the outside. The part that would have been in the pocket and being rubbed by the pocket watch and the keys and the pipe and the cigarette lighter and the coins and sandpaper and whatever else was in the toolbox or his pocket. But um, I do like the ones that where it's almost completely worn. When you see a coin that where you you only know it's a nickel because of its size. You know, you'd be surprised that it can actually work in a vending machine because the weight is reduced by so much because it's so worn off. I love that. Where that coin has been all over the place. A coin collector, on the other hand, hates that because its condition is, you know, Z minus or whatever the worst is. It's not triple A plus, it's the worst. But that coin did so much. It made our economy move. It, it, it was responsible for, here's a graph of our economy, that nickel that's almost worn away was responsible for all of the up. The one that's, that was never used, that was responsible for all of the down. That's my economic theory. Where's my Nobel Prize? Anyway, again, I apologize for my joke response in the fountain pen thing. But I just, it was, again, the idea that guns are considered an everyday carry. That they should, that guns should be natural to carry every day. Um, that's a world that maybe we live in that world. I hope we don't. It would be nice if we didn't, and I think we c could live happily ever after, maybe happier ever after, if guns were not carried on the person. Yes, I know, you're, all of you have, all of you people over there, am I pointing to the right or the left, think that everyone should have a gun. And all these people over here think every person should never have a gun. And neither one of you are right. I'm just telling you, neither one of you are right. <laughs> but you think you are. Ugh. Makes me crazy. Anyway, I'm sorry. Enjoy your everyday carry, whatever it might be whether it be a sexual device, a pen, a rosary, worry beads, or a gun. Bye.